you know, uh, Bitcoin. I want to really put it into, it's a psychological mindset thing. Um, it's one that uh, I've never stressed, even when the market was on our back a lot with how much of a scam, I think it was the kind of thing was what it was called. And, you know, listen, global populations don't like the fiat system and it's incredibly secure. It's more secure than 10,000 banks combined. And it serves a real need at El Salvador. This was, you know, incredible. They gave away a hundred dollars or something of that sort for free Bitcoin and more people got a crypto wallet than have a real bank account. Um, like, whoa, you know, and that goes back to every man, woman and child kind of TAM, uh, total addressable market thing. Bitcoin has that. And uh, a lot of people are really concerned that it'll get regulated. And I think it's going to be really hard with that much attention from the masses, uh, if that makes sense. So, Are, ARC talks a lot about, you know, the adoption on company balance sheets, especially like public companies. Are there any catalysts you foresee for Bitcoin or is it just overall, you know, global adoption? I think the biggest catalyst, so I had a few catalysts written out in 2019 for the free newsletter. Um, the first one was, I actually said economic uh, uncertainty uh, because you and I comfortably live in a country where for the most part, our dollar is safe. We put money in the bank account, it's safe. Um, but the far majority of, um, you know, uh, the population in the, in the world uh, does not feel safe putting their money in the bank and their currency can be very volatile. So um, that, that concern and those fears around their money, uh, I, what I'm trying to say is like you can, it's called product bias when you only buy stocks that represent your choices. And I would say Bitcoin is very popular in countries that are lower GDP because there's so much uncertainty in their financial systems and we don't quite have that here. Um, so maybe it's harder for us to wrap our head around why, uh, you know, we saw that happen in El Salvador, but we had kind of predicted that because Venezuela went through something similar earlier many years ago where the uh, inflation was so bad that their currency was, and, and their currency was so weak that even the extreme volatility of Bitcoin outperformed their currency. Uh, and so we were seeing a flood of, and, of Venezuelans buying Bitcoin. Uh, so economic uncertainty, and I was saying even now in the United States, uh, with everything the Fed did uh, with liquidity, is could be concerning to a lot of people, uh, including myself. So to hedge that, Bitcoin is a good option. After economic uncertainty, mobile payments was another catalyst we had outlined, uh, which is getting easier and easier with the Lightning Network. Uh, look to Square, uh, Block, Square, Block, whatever. Um, you know, they're a great example of paving the way for mobile payments. Uh, obviously, there is a lot of work to do there. Um, Bitcoin is not very stable, so we'll see some altcoins probably uh, serve that need where it's more stable so you can basically be a back back end money maker kind of thing and so that's one is fixing the stability piece but mobile payments and then the other is institutional adoption which i think has been solved largely solved for uh, we had seen fidelity as an early adopter in the institution space when we first wrote about it uh, they were all over bitcoin when chase and jamie diamond were bearish and i was leaning more towards fidelity because uh, you know, I think their CEO is a woman actually, which is pretty neat. So yeah. So basically, um, I would say those are the key things and we've ticked some of those boxes already. Uh, economic uncertainty probably has been ticked and then it might be ticked even more as time goes on. And then the, um, institutional adoption. So what would be left is mobile payments. Yeah. It's very exciting. I think a lot of funds that only hold stocks are very skeptical about Bitcoin. So it's, it's really cool talking to someone like you where you have the flexibility to have the open mind to, you know, go into a new asset class that's, you know, the adoption rates just growing very fast. So 
Beth, with that, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. I really appreciate you sharing your insights on the metaverse, emerging trends, Bitcoin, and growth stock investing. Before we close out the episode, where can the audience go to learn more about you and the IO Fund? Yeah, thanks for the question. I would go to our site and sign up for our free newsletter. Every week we send out really quality analysis from myself and two financial analysts. And sometimes the portfolio manager does macro. So, you know, we work really hard on that free analysis to make it accessible to everyone. Uh, we also have a premium product uh, that allows people to see every trade we do. They actually are, our trades are texted to your phone uh, through SMS and they are emailed to you. So uh, real time portfolio management and you'll see when we're buying and when we're selling. And it's also really great probably to see even with this current sell off, there's key positions we've been building. So that's the kind of thing we do at the premium side. Uh, and then you get really end up the deep dive analysis on some of the stocks we don't talk about on the free side. So that have been winners. Awesome. I'll be sure to link all those in the show notes. Thanks a lot, Beth. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Clay. Really appreciate it.